SSH port forwarding is a very powerful SSH feature. In this video, I will show you how it can help you. We'll go through various use cases and example scenarios, including accessing network services securely, bypassing network firewalls, exposing services to the internet. We'll also discuss the dangers of SSH tunneling and how to prevent them. Please like and subscribe for more Linux security network and cloud content. My name is Philip. Let's start. Let's imagine a scenario where we have a server that has a service listening only on localhost. You cannot connect to it remotely. The only way to establish the connection is from within that server. SSH local port forwarding allows you to build a secure tunnel between the client and the server. SSH will open a socket on the client machine. In our example, port 1234 TCP that the client can connect to. SSH will then pass the traffic over a secure channel to the remote endpoint. This has many use cases. For example, accessing your database that is listening on an application interface to the management interface, or securing the connection to a legacy application. Please mind that the tunnel is encrypted. So if you have a legacy application that does not encrypt the traffic, using SSH local port forwarding is a great option to increase the security your traffic will be sent encrypted. The command is as follows. ssh-l that indicates local port forwarding, then the port number that SSH should listen on the client machine, colon, IP address and port to forward the traffic on the remote end. Then we just specify the other end of the tunnel. That is basically our SSH server that you connect to. It's that simple. One thing to keep in mind is that listening on port below 1024 requires elevated privileges. And maybe it's good to set server alive interval parameter on the client so the connection won't be dropped by a firewall that closes inactive sessions. Let's see that in action. Let me connect to a remote server and start HTTP service on localhost port 8080. To confirm it's listening only on the localhost, let's do ss-l command with source port set to 8080. As you can see, the local address is 127.0.0.1, that is localhost. Just to be sure that HTTP server is handling request, let's do curl command works. Now let's go back to our client machine. Let me try to get a reply from the server with URL. It failed obviously. We can double check if the remote port is closed by doing netcat command. As expected, it's closed. Let me build an SSH tunnel with local port forwarding. Command will be ssh-l as its local forwarding then the local port number that SSH should listen on the client, in our case it's 1234, then the address and port of the remote service, that is localhost port 8080, and then the far end of the tunnel. I'm also adding dash n to inform SSH that I don't want a pseudo terminal to be allocated, and dash f to ask SSH to go to the background. Tunnel is up. Let's check if SSH is listening on port 1234 by executing an ss command. We can see it's there, process ID 24222. Let me confirm if it's our tunnel by executing the ps command. Ok, all is set. I'm connecting to localhost on the client machine port 1234. The connection should be forwarded to the remote server on port 8080. Voila, it works. Let me shut down the tunnel by killing the SSH process. As you can see, we no longer can get a reply. 
I will execute the same command but now with dash V to get verbose output. Look at this. Local connection to localhost port 1234 will be forwarded to remote address localhost port 8080. Local forwarding listening on port 1234. If we execute CORL command, we'll get a debug message. Connection to port 1234, forwarding to localhost port 8080 requested. We can go even further with local port forwarding. Let's say we have a client machine outside of our network. Client machine can connect to a jump host through SSH. Jump host has a public interface and a private interface. Inside our network, we have a server accessible only through a private network. All is protected with a firewall. Our server is running HTTP service. The client machine on the outside cannot reach the HTTP service on the inside. As HTTP service is not exposed publicly and also is using private IPs that are non-routable over the public network. On the other hand, HTTP service can be accessed from within the network. In our example, we can access it from the jump host. With local port forwarding, we can build a tunnel from the client machine on the outside to the jump host on the inside over the public network. SSH will listen on the client machine, in our case it's port 1234 TCP, and when you connect to that port, the traffic will be sent to the jump host that in turn will send it to HTTP server inside the network. This allows you to access services that are not accessible directly from your laptop, but are accessible from the jump host or a bastion host. The command is ssh-l to indicate local port forwarding, then the listening port that the client will connect to, colon, remote IP and port to tell SSH where to forward the traffic to, followed by the remote end of the tunnel, that is our jump host. Let's try that in action. First, let me connect to the remote server and enable HTTP service on port 8080. I will leave it running in the foreground so we can see requests coming in. Now let's go to our jump host and confirm that it can get a reply from the server. All looks good. Let's build the tunnel by executing ssh-l, then port number to listen, in our case it's 1234, then where to forward the traffic to, in our case it's server port 8080, followed by the remote end of the tunnel that is the jump host. I'm adding dash n option to indicate I don't want a pseudo terminal allocated, and dash f option to put the SSH process to background. I'm checking if the SSH process is indeed listening on port 1234 on the client. As you can see, process ID 11740 is there, on the localhost. PS command confirms it's our process. Now the final test. CURL connection to the localhost port 1234 is working. Let me try a different HTTP client so it's more visible in their server logs. I'm stopping the SSH process and running the same SSH command but with dash V option for verbose output. In the debug logs, we see that the connection to the localhost port 1234 will be forwarded to the server address on port 8080 and that SSH is listening on port 1234. Both CURL and XH commands work as expected. Just to recap, SSH local port forwarding allows you to build a tunnel between your SSH client and the remote server. The tunnel is secure. It's protected by SSH encryption. You can forward the traffic to a service on the SSH server or to a host it can reach within its network. You can forward multiple ports and multiple IPs within a single SSH connection. You can use server alive interval parameter to keep idle connections up. 
you can optionally use dash n option to enable just the forwarding without allocating the terminal. You can optionally use the dash f option to put the SSH process to background. Another type of port forwarding is called remote port forwarding. It works like local forwarding, but in reverse order. Let's say we have a PC without a public IP where we run HTTP service. The PC is behind a firewall. It's not possible for someone from the outside world to reach the HTTP service on the PC. In order to expose the service, we can build a VM in the cloud with a public IP. Of course, we can use any other server with a public IP, but cloud VM is the easiest way. We build an SSH tunnel by connecting from our client to the cloud VM. We ask the SSH server on the cloud to listen on the port 8080 and forward back any traffic it receives to our local HTTP server. So, whoever connects to the public IP of our cloud VM on port 8080 will get a reply back from the HTTP server running on the local PC. This type of forwarding can be used to expose our local server behind a NAT to an outside world if we don't have a public IP. It can be also used to temporarily expose our development environment for a demo. The command is ssh-r to indicate remote forwarding, then remote port the server should listen on, followed by local IP and port to forward the traffic to. At the end, we specify the remote end of the tunnel, that is our cloud VM. Let's see how it works. I'm starting an HTTP service on my local PC, listening on port 8080. For this demo, I'll be using Google Cloud, but you can use any SSH server with public IP or any other cloud provider. First, let's open a firewall in GCP to allow incoming traffic on port 22 and 8080 to our server. Now let's create a tiny VM with the above firewall rule applied. Let me log into the VM and edit SSHD config file by setting gateway ports to yes and restarting the SSHD service. This step is necessary because by default, a remote SSH server will listen only on the local host. If you want to listen on the public interface, we need to enable this parameter. Now I'm setting up the tunnel with ssh-r, followed by the port remote party should listen on, and our information where the traffic should be forwarded to. Remaining part of the command is straightforward, and that is the remote end of the tunnel, so the address of our ssh server on the cloud VM followed by dash n to indicate we don't want a pseudo terminal and dash f to put the SSH process in background. I will connect to yet another VM outside of my home network to simulate an external connection. From there, let's try curl command to the public IP of the GCP VM. As you can see, we got a reply from our local HTTP. I will run xh command and go to our HTTP server logs. We can see both CURL and XH connection attempts. Let's kill the SSH process that will stop the tunneling and run SSH command with the verbose option. In the debug log, we can see that the remote end would listen on localhost, but because of gateway ports enabled, it's listening on any IP. We can also see that the remote connection on port 8080 will be forwarded to localhost 8080 on the client. Let's initiate yet another request from outside of the network. You can see in the debug log that the 129.159 address did connect. If we look at our HTTP service, all connections are from a local SSH server, so we see only 127 as the source. Just to recap, remote port forwarding can be used to expose local service to the public internet. Connection between the SSH client and SSH server is encrypted. You can forward multiple ports and IPs within a single SSH connection. You need to set the SSH gateway ports parameter to true if you want the remote end to listen on the public interface. Last type of SSH 
forwarding is called dynamic forwarding. It's basically a SOX proxy that allows you to proxy your connection through the remote end of the tunnel with SOX protocol. This type of forwarding can be used to bypass content-aware firewalls as this traffic will be hidden within SSH session. If we have a PC behind a firewall, we can spin a cloud VM with a public IP and build an SSH tunnel with dynamic port forwarding enabled. It will set up a SOX proxy on our local machine that we can use to connect via the external cloud VM using proxy-aware applications. It's set up using SSH-D, then the listening port on the client, followed by the address of the remote SSH server. Let me show you how it works. I'm spinning up a tiny VM in GCP. Next, let's just type SSH-D, that indicates a dynamic proxy, followed by the port number and the address of the remote server. Dash N parameter indicates we don't want the terminal allocated. And dash F to put the process in background. Let's open our browser and navigate to proxy settings. I'm configuring a SOX proxy by entering localhost as the IP and 1080 as the port. Let's check our public IP address. Nice, the internet will see us coming from the Google IP. Let me stop the SSH process and set up the tunnel with a different server. Let me refresh the page. Our IP has changed. At the end, I'd like to point out some of the security considerations for SSH port forwarding. Tunneling is a very powerful thing. It can be used to secure and ease access to remote services that otherwise wouldn't be possible. However, it can also be misused. First of all, the SSH tunnel looks like a regular SSH session. As the traffic is encrypted, it's not possible to distinguish a tunnel from a shell or SFTP. The traffic is hidden within the tunnel. It's very hard to detect such activity. Secondly, some connections might be prohibited and the firewall rules are put in place to block such traffic. But with tunneling, one can bypass the firewalls. Tunnels can also open a backdoor to the corporate network. Someone can establish a remote port forwarding from within the network, allowing the attackers to obtain access. SSH port forwarding is often neglected from a security standpoint. Disabling port forwarding on your critical servers is as easy as setting allow TCP forwarding to know in your SSHD config. Please mind that SSH port forwarding is a convenient way to tunnel traffic. But for serious and long-term applications, there are much better solutions.